folks, Keenan here over at Illustrated Menagerie. I am a fiction writer and scientific illustrator. If you're new to this channel, I mostly post videos about Chimere, the setting of my books and my Seed World speculative biology project. I have a published anthology of short stories and I'm working on my first novel, all set in Chimere. As many of you know, Prehistoric Planet is a paleontological documentary airing on Apple TV. Today's episode is going to be my impressions and then a review, along with a discussion on the show's inspirations and implications for Chimere. My impression is, simply put, mind blown. The animation of this show is astonishing. Artists truly brought their A-game. So many creatures done amazing justice. Feathered dinosaurs really shined in this series, and pterosaur lovers can enjoy a rich visual feast. It features a lot more young dinosaurs than most series, which is great for reasons I'll get to in my review portion. The sound design was also excellent, a wide range of vocalizations that sounded decidedly avian and reptilian. Alright, now on to the meat of the review. Spoilers ahead, ye be warned. This show is broken up into episodes that highlight five biomes, coasts, deserts, freshwater, ice worlds, and forests. All of these episodes take place in the Mastrictium within the last five or so million years of the Cretaceous. The show takes a flash The show takes a flash fiction format where each segment focuses on one animal for more or less a single scene and fitting between 5 and 8 scenes per episode. This allowed them to feature a wide range of species. Pretty much all of my personal issues with the show came down to this decision. I want to stress that it's not that I think the format was bad. In fact, it's great for now allowing in fact, it's great in allowing them to explore a lot more animals across the forests, coasts, and desert throughout the world during the Mastrictian, so there's merit to that decision. I personally preferred the format used in Walking with Dinosaurs, where the episodes each have a protagonist animal or species that they generally follow, showcasing other animals in that environment as they go through the story. The most holistic and similar to Prehistoric Planet was, of course, Giant of the Skies, following an ornithochirid, I believe now called Tropionathus, but I could be misremembering, because its story took the protagonist across many continents. A lot of the critiques of Prehistoric Planet I've seen on Twitter center around wanting more time and feeling the segments are a little bit scattered. I think the Walking with Dinosaurs episode format is tighter and more engaging. That said, I don't necessarily think they made a bad call here. As I said before, flash fiction formatting enabled them to jump around a lot more, and we got to see more dinosaurs and pterosaurs than we otherwise would have because of it. Another critique I've seen is that the lack of non-dinosaur and pterosaur diversity. Crocs specifically were notably absent. It's a valid critique, and I think Prehistoric Planet was made to introduce people to our current understanding of dinosaurs, mostly showing them as animals and, in many cases, feathered and with enough resources and talent to portray them convincingly. And at this, they thoroughly succeeded. I do hope we get future installments with the team, and if so, I think a protagonist-centered narrative throughout the whole episode would engage the audiences a lot more. I also think it would give more time to explore more animals of a given habitat than the single focus of the flash fiction format did. Another criticism that I've seen levied at the show is the lack of diversity in its consultants. And while it may have been a missed opportunity, there is some diversity in the credits and educational segments for the scene. Definitely room to improve. Other critiques I've come across is the lack of credit to the visual effects artists who brought this show to life. It's standard in the industry, but really is a shame, since that's by far the standout aspect of the show. For a program to brand itself with groundbreaking animation and a level of realism that in many shots confound the eye as if it's being animated or practical effect is a pretty significant mark against it. Something to be done better next time. Alright, enough negativity. I am so enchanted and satisfied by this show and don't want to give the impression that I didn't like it. I lost track of the number of times a sequence or animation left me speechless. 
it was honestly refreshing that they made no mention of the asteroid or extinction. That conclusion always, I feel, takes away from how successful these animals were in their context. I talked about the trailer offering a masterclass in wonder, and on this they fully delivered. The behaviors were often speculative, but grounded and sensible, often based on but not directly copying real animal behavior of today. It's difficult to portray dinosaurs in a way that feels authentic. The only animals we really can draw comparisons to are large mammals and crocodilians, neither of which are very good proxies. Prehistoric Planet delivers in this regard. For so many of them, they feel like real animals caught on camera. I would be hard-pressed to name a favorite sequence, but these three really stuck out to me. The opening of fresh water featuring velociraptors hunting pterosaurs in a canyon. Taking inspiration from snow leopards and eagles wasn't the direction I expected, but it worked so well. It was an excellent opportunity to showcase use of feathers in flightless predators, included wing-assisted incline running, basically flapping as they climbed, and the female using her tail and wings to slow a very long fall. The core concept behind the white cockatrice of Chimere, gliding in a loose sense, basically falling slowly onto prey, it was a real treat to see what may have been an ancestral behavior of this speculative animal being featured in this show. The intensity and intelligence of these predators really caught my attention. Eudromaeosaurs have been a personal favorite since I was little. They're a major part of Chimere, so it was delightful to see them done such justice in this show. The Dreadnoughtus, the Dreadnoughtus Duel in the Desert if any of you have seen my developments of titanosaurs and chimera over the years, you'll know I like my sauropods as grappling bruisers. Seeing this idea animated with such skill and precision was breathtaking. I've definitely watched that sequence over a dozen times. The sheer power and aggression was just... <sighs> Hell yeah is the only way I can really articulate it. Special shout out to the Ostroposeidon sequence in the forests. Seeing titans bulldoze their way through a forest was also delightful to see since it's so central to titanosaurs in my speculative biology project. Last but not least was the therizinosaurs in forests. This wasn't given away in any capacity in the promotional work, for which I am grateful. The adult had such a delicious sense of scale, such power. Angling the camera from the perspective of the juveniles, seeing what they one day might become, was endearing and wondrous. The focus on the juveniles throughout the series is something I want to circle back to. So many dinosaur documentaries and other media, adults are the focus. The size and power of dinosaurs is part of their appeal, so this makes sense. I'm definitely guilty of it in my own world building. The reality is, though, that dinosaurs were largely our selection specialists. They had a lot of babies, and some would have taken many years to reach maturity, even more to hit full adult size. It is likely that, depending on the time of year, a vast majority of dinosaurs would have been juveniles and subadults, something that is very much not the case in mammal-dominated megafauna ecologies. Seeing so many baby dinosaurs and pterosaurs in this show, often on their own, really drives home the difference between dominant fauna of the Mesozoic compared to today. This is a concept that I explore more thoroughly in my Parenting Strategies episode, if you want to learn more. I also just, I've got to talk about the pterosaurs in this show. This really feels like a love letter to pterosaurs in many respects. Considering Dr. Witten and Dr. Habib were consultants on this, I am not surprised. Catsoquatlus and Hatsigoteryx scenes were especially delightful. Such a sense of majesty and menace. These pterosaurs had such a huge impact on me. A ton of thoughts spinning in my head, and it's a safe bet you'll see some inspiration as I start working on the Asdarkids and others for my upcoming Pterosaurs of Chimere episode. Not sure when that will air because of a ton of art that I need to do for it, but it'll be great when it arrives. Although I came out swinging with some criticism, this still gets a hard 10 out of 10 for me. Five stars, better than sex, whatever system you use. I'm not a great critic. I can see all the hard work that went into this and it amazes me. 
sure, there's room for improvement, but if I'm rating this based on my subjective impressions, it's top tier. I love it. Please give us more. If you are able, please get the free trial of Apple TV and watch it, and encourage your friends and family who maybe aren't as into dinosaurs to check it out as well. The show is super engaging, and I've already met several people who've learned a lot and enjoyed it despite minimal baseline knowledge. It doesn't dumb it down, but is quite accessible. The more views it gets, the more Apple will invest in future works. Prehistoric Planet is truly a masterclass in wonder, thrill, and delight in the natural world, and I strongly encourage you all to watch it. And do it again if you've seen it already. Alright, that's all for now. Cheers, folks! <laughs>